Hey y'all, it's Chloe and we're back with another video. This, you guys, is another Married at First Sight Season 11 Episode 4 Review. <laughs> First, I want to say shout out to Delinda Tracy TV, okay? She popped up in my comments and she popped up in my live for the comment read. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, you guys, don't forget to blow up that comment section because we will be doing another comment read. And this time it's going to be on Saturday because everybody is saying Monday is not a good day. So Saturday is. Um, don't forget to um, put in the comments whether you agree with me or disagree with me. And we'll be able to discuss it. Until then, I'll see you all on Saturday for the comment read. It might be a little bit earlier, but I'll set a reminder. Don't worry. Okay, now that that's out the way, let's get into this review. You guys, this episode was everything I guess I expected it to be. It was just, you know, basically meeting the parents and getting to go to Mexico. <laughs> now, <clears throat> although the review, um, although the episode was pretty, um, I guess boring i'm not gonna really say boring i'm just gonna go um we have to go through this step okay unfortunately it's not the most exciting or entertaining part of married at first sight but we still have to go through it so since we're here let's just do it as you all know we do our reviews the way the episode will happen so <clears throat> with that being said follow me on this episode journey all right so the scene opens up basically with Bennett and Amelia exactly where we left off last episode and Bennett and Amelia are getting ready to like you know get ready for bed and Bennett is trying to help Amelia take off um undo her buttons in her tie from her dress and he's like oh my god I can't get this knot out I don't know and he's concentrating and focusing and Amelia is like do 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 tapping on the glass tapping on the glass do 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 tapping on the glass tapping on the glass and he's like I can't focus I can't focus but eventually he gets it undone okay um he then goes to put on his nightgown okay his nightgown to be exact okay a nice yellow t-shirt okay a long t-shirt well a dress <laughs> a actual dress okay and Amelia comes out in her checkerboard um onesie and she says do you always wear a dress to bed <laughs> I like it I like it and she does say that she's never had a guy to wear a dress to bed so I was like they're perfect for each other I mean <clears throat> they just seem so natural with each other so comfortable with each other like they really already knew each other even though they known each other in passing it really seems like they really already knew each other and i'm here for it okay cut over to olivia and brad and olivia just basically is like listen don't put your suitcase on the bed that's the one rule that i have okay i don't deal with the germs okay not the suitcase not the feet not the shoes none of that good stuff you know don't put that on the bed i don't want it on the bed and you know brad's like um okay and he takes the suitcase off the bed and I'm like I mean I could dig it but like son is it really that serious with the whole suitcase situation like can we really like make this a thing that he can't put the suitcase on the bed to get his clothes out but it's okay because they got a little you know stool at the end of the bed so he's able to just you know yank it down a little bit and open it up to get his clothes out <clears throat> Um, she doesn't really have any expectations when it comes to like, you know, what's going to happen at nighttime between her and her husband because she's kind of attracted to him, you know, and he's on the same board. Like, I really don't have any expectations when it comes to us getting ready to go to bed, but they do agree that they sleep on certain sides of the bed and luckily, you know, he sleeps on the left and she sleeps on the right. So it's perfect. They don't have to fight about what side of the bed they're going to sleep on and any married or couple knows who lives with each other that what side of the bed you sleep on is a very very important thing because you can't get comfortable like that you know you gotta be on your side you gotta be in your, your, your you know your little area you know that that's a big deal that's a big deal okay no matter what bed um no matter where me and my husband live we always sleep on the same side of the bed no matter where we go in a hotel or anything like that it's just like it's just what we do okay you just have to have your side of the bed <laughs> Christina and Henry are in their room getting ready for bed and you know Henry is just really 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 awkward okay I'm starting to think that it's Henry who's more awkward than Christina well 
that's apparent, right? He's sitting there in his suitcase just looking for stuff, looking for stuff, looking for stuff. And Christina is kind of just sitting on the sideline like, what the um, WTH, WTH, like what the, you know. Mm -hmm. She's like, her facial expressions are saying, what did I get myself into? Why am I with this strange, awkward man? But nonetheless, we are here, so I might as well enjoy it. So she's sitting there and she's <clears throat> just waiting for him to get himself together because she's already, you know, ready for bed. And then they get into bed and the conversation between them is a little really, really, really awkward to watch, okay? It's Woody and Imani decide they're gonna bum rush or like, you know, go visit, I should say, Miles and Karen because Miles and Karen are already, you know, getting ready for bed and you know, she's already tired and she already wants to sleep in her dress. So she's a little worn out from the day, you know, of talking to people, saying hi, dancing, having fun, exhausted. You know, she just met her husband for the first time and they had a long night, you know, a long, long, long night. So you hear a knock at the door, knock at the door and they go open the door and it's Woody and Mouse and it's Woody and Imani and they just like, hey, what's up? And I was just like, this is so cute. Like, they're really friends, y'all. <laughs> like, real, real friends. The fact that Woody and Imani went to see Karen and Miles just showed that the relationship between them is going to be amazing, okay? They are really going to be able to discuss these marital issues that they're going to have. I think that it's going to be healthy. Not only just for Woody and Miles, but also for um, Karen and Imani because now... They have some type of relationship, some type of bond, okay? Even the fact that Woody and Miles are best friends gives the, Karen and Imani the opportunity to bond as well. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be cute. We're going to see a lot of double dates for them, I think. I think we're going to see a lot of interaction between the four of them. And I think it's going to be beautiful to watch them lean on each other to get through this process, right? So, the thing is, when they get there, you know, Karen's just like, hi. You know, I'm just tired. And I mean, Woody and Miles are like, what's up, bro? What's up? Oh, what's up, you know? And Imani is just like, just as excited as them. And Karen is kind of like, you know, really just tired, trying to get through this. Like, all right, it's nice meeting you guys. We got to do this later. I'm ready to go to bed type of situation. I mean, she kind of killed the excitement, but not, not, not completely, not completely. Overall, I love the fact that them four, I think, are going to build a nice... <clears throat> nice bond together okay so now mouse go over and you know takes out her hairpins and he grabs him a pillow and he lays at the bottom of the bed and he's just rubbing her feet and i'm just like oh my god where did they find him okay where did they find mouse where i need to know somebody let me know <laughs> but <clears throat> nonetheless it's beautiful Woody and um, Amani are getting ready for bed and she's just in the bathroom like he's gonna have to see this at one point okay so she's taking off her makeup and she's getting you know getting ready for bed like they do and she gets in the bed <clears throat> and Woody gets in the bed and he got on a do-rag and I'm sitting here like oh lord <laughs> he got on a whole do-rag okay and they lay down and they just talking and I really like the bond between them they really seem really really comfortable with each other it's it's beautiful to watch, okay? Um, I know we want drama, and that's going to come, but let's enjoy the nice, sweet things as they are happening, you know? Let's just go on that ride and enjoy the couples who are actually showing us what Married at First Sight is supposed to be like when you are actually matched with the person you're supposed to be matched with. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Okay. So it's the next day and all the couples are waking up and we get to see them wake up on their diary cams. And then of course we get to see the married at first sight cameras wake up. So it's kind of like a, a balance of both as always, okay? It's not overdone like last season, which I'm very happy about, but it, it was done, okay? So um, Amelia and Bennett <clears throat> wake up and um, Amelia, talking about his nightgown and he's just like well I like comfortable I like to be comfortable more than anything and he's pulling the shirt over his arms and over his legs and he's just like hey I don't like the fact that I can do this and she asks him like um can you see me without your glasses and he's like yeah is your vision really bad and then they swap glasses to see if they can actually see out of each other's glasses come to find out they basically have the same prescription so I'm just like look at them like they just two peas in a pot okay they just go 
go together, okay? They just mesh together. They just belong together in my eyes, okay? They wear the same glasses, you guys. Like, come on. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. So that means that, like, if she can't find her glasses at any point, you can always say, hey, use mine. <laughs> I think it's cute. I like it. Christine, Christina is over there talking about how she couldn't find her charger, that her phone was dead, and she didn't feel like a normal person when she woke up because she couldn't use her phone. And I'm just sitting here like, girl, you just married someone last night and you're focused on finding your phone? Okay, somebody do something with Christina because I don't know if it's just like from last episode, I'm really not feeling her vibe, but I'm really not feeling her vibe. I'm just like, girl, we, we talking about Mary at first sight and you talking about a stranger. We talking about your first night with your husband and you talking about a daggone phone and a charger. Like, come on. Make it make sense, Christina. Make it make sense. But anyway, Christina and Henry are talking about, you know, the honeymoon and where they think they're going to go. And we find out that, you know, Henry hasn't been out the country. And that's a big deal. Not really a big deal, but the way Ken, um, Christine makes it seem like it's a big deal. She wants to keep bringing up the fact that, oh, I have friends all over the place, you know, because I've been here and I've been here and I've done this and I've done that. And I'm just like, okay, girl, we get it. I don't think that, you know, Henry didn't go out of the country because he can't. Maybe he just didn't want to. Why does that have to be like, you know, a big thing to you? It, it, she just really irked my nerves in this whole episode with the fact that she travels and he's never traveled, okay? She just want to make it seem like she's bigger or better or doing something more than what it seems like Henry is doing. If you ask me, that's just my opinion. Okay, I think she's just not feeling him, and I think that's gonna be part of the problem going on down the line. Okay, so Woody and Imani wake up, and you guys, they didn't have sex, which to me is very surprising. Okay, because I just knew deep down in my heart, I just knew deep down in my soul that they were gonna be able to, you know, like do it, <laughs> but they didn't do it. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I felt like they should have did it. <laughs> I wanted them to, but they didn't, okay? They didn't do it, um, but they did, you know, talk, and they got breakfast, and when they got breakfast, you know, um, uh, Woody starts smacking on his croissant, and Imani is like, oh, no, not the smacking. I thought I told you we don't like the snack, the smacking. We don't like that, and he's like, I I'm, I'm smacking? I'm smacking? And she's like, I thought you didn't like smacking too. But I guess when you're the one doing the smacking, you don't realize that it's snack smacking. Because apparently Woody is a smacker and Armani doesn't like it. So that's her pet peeve, you guys. Like a her real pet peeve. So if you ask me, I can see her getting a little bit agitated if that continues. I hope it's not a big deal. Because you know, sometimes people make things big deals that don't need to be big, big deals. So I hope this doesn't become a big deal, you know? You know. But anyway, Miles is like, when Miles wake up, he literally just looks happy, excited to be married. He's um, he's just like, oh my God, I just married the woman. And he's just looking at her and she's laying in the bed. He's like, she's beautiful and, and she's so sweet and she's so kind. And I'm just like, why, Miles? Why, Miles, do you have to be this guy, okay? You are like coming off as the perfect guy i'm not going to say he is because this is just tv you guys remember this is tv but he's giving us that perfect guy persona you know the vibes that like oh my god this is the guy every girl she wants yeah. now brett and olivia y'all brett <laughs> i can't with his sense of humor i don't know i don't get it. i don't like it okay she asks him like how was last night he's like what happened last night and she's like um we got married and he's like, oh, I had too much to drink. If someone don't sit Brett down and tell him that his sense of humor is whack, okay? What he considers funny is really just not that funny. Um, maybe he'll stop. Maybe he will stop. But, you know, I don't see it happening anytime soon, okay? Um, but overall, Brett does seem happy with Olivia, which is really starting to come turn around my thoughts for them because I really thought that like in the beginning he was going to be this, you know, J, A or whatever, but he's not really giving me those vibes no more. He does seem a little bit more genuine. I'm not going to like, you know, let him out the woods just yet because something's telling me that something more is to come. 
I'm just saying. Something more is to come. I don't know if it's, if it's all the previews we get to see or what the case may be, but whatever it is, it's giving me those vibes that, hey, don't, don't fall for Brat. Don't fall for Brat. So in that case, I won't be falling for Brat, okay? Now, it's time for everyone to meet their families. We're not going to go into like deep, deep, deep conversations about what happened between them. We're going to touch on some stuff and we're just going to keep it moving, okay? So when Mal sit down to talk to Kara's mother and her sister and her brother-in-law or whatever, um, her mother just basically wants to know like... I just want you, I just want you to be here for the right reasons. I don't want you to string my daughter along. And she's like, oh, I will never do that. You know, like I I'm gonna put her first. Her feelings are most important. Like you know, even when she was going to sleep last night, she was saying she wanted to sleep in her dress, and I'm fine with that. But then you know, she had bobby pins in her hair, so I'm like, let's just take the bobby pins out so you can be comfortable. Like he wants to put her first, which as a husband you should do for your wife, right? So her mother and father, they eventually, you know, come around. The fact that her mother is like, oh my God, I really like him. If she doesn't like him, then I'm gonna have to have a talk with her because I like him. And I was like, oh, look at mom, look at her. Because in the beginning, mom was like, oh no, this don't make no sense. This is not what you're supposed to do. But now look at her all falling in love with Miles. But Miles makes it easy, I should say. He's the guy that just comes off like the perfect guy. So I can understand why her mother would definitely be, you know, feeling him okay um but she's definitely pleased with him and i love it i i, I love it okay so when Karen sits down with Miles' parents, you know, Miles is a mama's boy okay now his mother asks her like how does she feel about submission okay and everyone's like what what submission like what and is she like not like sms i was talking about like submitting to your husband you know like letting him take the lead and Karen's like i have no problem with letting him take the lead but i'm the neck you know i'm the neck <laughs> and um the mother was like exactly you know that's exactly what i was gonna say but she does say that her son is to be treated with kindness and respect, okay? And if that Karen can't do those things, then she can send him on back to her and she'll pick up the pieces where he left off. Now, Karen says, like, she's not really alarmed by that because she understands his mother and her mother's pretty much the same way. But she just hopes that this isn't like, you know, his mother trying to be in the relationship type of situation. And I said that the first time in the last review, you guys, that if, she, if she's the type of mother that wants to be included and everything that happens in this marriage, then there's going to be a problem. There's nothing wrong with caring for your son and your daughter and wanting to protect them. But there becomes a point where when you give them away to their spouse, you have to let them figure out and work through their problems on their own. So the fact that she's like, oh, if you can't say, if you can't do that, you know, just send them back to me and I'll pick up the pieces. First of all, there's no pieces you can pick up from their marriage. You can't pick that up, okay? There's things that she can do for him that his mother cannot do. There's things that she will do for him that his mother will not do, okay? So I don't think she's going to be able to actually pick up those pieces. But I understand what she was trying to get at. And it definitely made sense to me. And I can appreciate it being a mother, you know? Okay. Bennett talks to Amelia's mother and family, uh, mother and bro brother. And if Nat finds out that he is... Um, that Amelia, resident, she might have a residency in like Minneapolis or Virginia. She can be anywhere. And they ask him, is he willing to actually, you know, make that move? Is he willing to, you know, move and adjust? And he kind of hesitates for a while because like he wants to be in New Orleans. Like this is his home. So he's just like, I don't, mm, I mean, I'm willing. If that's what's going to make her happy, I'm willing to do that for her. Okay. Amelia um, meets um, Bennett's family. Um, they give her some type of gift, and uh, y'all, I really don't remember what the gift was, so I'm just going to, like, move past it. <laughs> but they do give her a gift, and I love Bennett's mother, okay? Bennett's mother is telling her, like, I love my son. And I'm not saying I love my son because that's my son. Like, I love him as a human being. Like, the type of person he is, I love that about him, okay? Because you can have kids and love your kids, but she genuinely just loves the person that he is. Like, she raised him to be the man that she wanted him to be, and she genuinely genuinely likes him okay as a person if he wasn't her son she would genuinely just like him as a person and I may I get it it makes sense and she's like I can't get enough of him and I'm sitting here like if I was the other brother or the other sister I'd be feeling some type of way like okay what about me what about me <laughs> but anyway his sister okay his sister now she opened her mouth and said too much okay and I don't think it was her place to even make the statement but she says that 
um bennett doesn't want kids okay he'd rather adopt kids and i'm sitting here like that's not your place to have that conversation with her when you asked her if she wanted to have kids or not and she gave you her answer you should not have then decided to speak on what bennett wants okay that's bennett and um amelia's place they just met last night give them some time to warm up like what i was sitting there like mm -mm, she's overstepping her boundaries by doing the most okay but nonetheless they are submitting with Amelia, they like her, his family like him, um, like her, her family likes him. Everybody seems to be meshing well. Like so far, all parents are on board with these situations, okay? And I'm really, really loving the fact that the families are very supportive through this whole process so far. I'm really happy about that, okay? So when Olivia sits down with Brett's brothers and you know, or whatever, they telling her that they basically internet stalked her. They looked her up. They found out some things about her, but it's all good, you know. She's a nice girl. They like her. They appreciate her. Um, well, she's a nice girl from what they see, and you know, they just want you know her and Brad to be happy. Okay. They do ask her if she's ready for kids, and she says like she doesn't really prefer to have kids not even not really now she just wants to be selfish for a while and they're like yeah we understand that we get that if you want you can borrow you know his kids and you'll want to bring them back you'll change your mind and i'm just like okay so it seems like brad may be on the same page as um olivia but we won't really know until they actually you know sit down and have that conversation um um when brad meets olivia's family they talk about religion and he's like you know i'm not really a religious person i believe in religious values like you know i um hold myself to those standards but i'm not with organized religion so no i don't you know go to church and no i don't do these things like pray and stuff like that on a normal but i do you know hold myself to a higher standard so i guess i do have morals if that's what you want to get at just because i'm not religious per se doesn't mean i don't have morals morals you know it doesn't mean i'm not a nice guy doesn't mean you know i'm you know a douchebag <laughs> but i'm just like um i can understand i can understand his point of view and his her parents didn't seem to be too upset about it and i honestly thought that may have been a problem even with the fact that they brought it up because they're very religious but her father says that he's a man's man and you know he likes him and he can um understand he could actually see him being a good man for his daughter and i'm like wow like what is everybody looking at because i guess i'm missing maybe i'm just looking for signs at this point <laughs> maybe it's just me i don't know but everyone um in her family seems to like him and everyone in his family seems to like her so great good for them right now when armani sits down with woody's family um they do get into a conversation about him having an anger problem okay she asks about his temper and they're like oh listen he i've seen the devil okay i see the devil come out of him his mother was saying and his grandmother's like what why why like why would you say that and she was like no i've seen the devil and it's just like okay well dad what kind of anger problems he got that she's seen the devil the devil though like for real but anyway when um she's like well i'm not going to entertain that so i can't i'm not going to be pushing the buttons i'm not going to interact with that so i don't think it can ever escalate to be any more because i will let him know with no problem that he's not going to talk to me like that and when he's ready to talk he can come back later and i was like you better get it Amani, okay let him know we are not going to entertain that energy you will not be killing my vibe okay you want to be that mad you'll be mad by yourself and when you're ready to you know talk to me and communicate with me bring it on back bring it on back I like her. I like Imani, okay? She's straightforward. She's like, you know, this nice girl. She does have walls up, but they're not so far up that she's not willing to open up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Now, um, when Woody sits down with um, Imani's mother and father, so we are, I think we finally figured out that the stepfather is the mother's boyfriend, okay? The stepfather is the mother's husband or boyfriend or whatever case. So, at this point, Imani has two moms and two dads because she did have a stepmom. So I'm assuming that she has a stepmom, a mom, a stepdad, and a dad. And that's great. The fact that they can co-parent and come together and be one and really like, you know, all four of them care about her and want the best for her. I think that's beautiful, all right? They do ask Woody about his past relationships and what he's been through. And he does say that him and his ex-girlfriend both cheated on each other. Now, I'm gonna say this. I don't, okay. Maybe that did happen, but I can see him saying they both cheated on each other so that it doesn't seem like it was just all him, okay? Um, and I think that that's an honest answer because, like, 
a lot of people have cheated in the past. That's part of growth. That's part of development. So as long as he's willing to admit that and grow from it and learn from it, then I don't see the problem. Um, they didn't really make it a big problem. You can see that they were a little bit concerned, but they didn't really, you know, make it a big thing. Okay, so now we get over to Christina, and Christina's sitting down with Henry's family, and you know, she's just talking to them about, you know, how she travels from here and here, and do this and do that, and blah, 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 and they're really just like, you know, smitten by her, they're falling in love with her, they're like, listen, we, if you, this doesn't work out, they can take Henry, and we'll take you, and I was like, yeah, and the fact that she has like resting beef face, like, you can't really see what's going on in, um, on Christina's face, you can't really see it or hear it so yeah they're just smitten by christina and christina keeps talking about herself 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 instead of trying to figure out who henry is she's just basically saying well i can't wait to take him out of the country and teach him things and show him things and do stuff with him and i'm like that's all fine and dandy but you need to be finding out who is henry henry's father is over there like oh my god like roasting henry again i don't understand why henry's father is always roasting him but he is roasting him and olivia loves it she's like i understand it i get it this sense of humor the sarcasm i love it like that's how me and my family work and i'm like i can't see christina and her family working like that but whatever okay if that's that's what you want to tell us girl i believe it <laughs> um now henry sits down with olivia's parents and y'all it's so oh it's starting to be henry for me okay i'm really starting to realize that he's just an awkward person i don't know why he signed up for married at first sight he doesn't give me the type of person to sign up for married at first sight because he seems so shut down okay they're asking him questions he's giving one word answers i'm just saying here like this is like you know kind of disturbing to watch just a little bit but nonetheless i mean they got a good vibe from him he's getting a good vibe from them and i'm just sitting here like i don't understand what the vibe is so it must be editing at this point because at this point i didn't i didn't get it i didn't get it but they like him and even her sister i think it was her sister offered for them all to go learn how to cook together and grill and stuff like that and he's like that would be good that would be good and i'm like okay yeah be more excited be more happy be more you know she's inviting you into the family you're kind of just like that would be good and i'm just like he's not comfortable um he's just not comfortable i don't think henry is comfortable in his skin and i don't and i think that's starting to show on tv okay i think that's starting to show on tv and so you know mouse come in and mouse is like oh look at you with your braids girl you better work and i was like yes you better go ahead karen with your cornrows honey and she got cornrows and what's her name got her box braids amani got her box braids and i love me some box braids okay i was like yes y'all better work with the braids get them all together they both look really cute and they get these little baskets to their house and they just find out that they're going to mexico now usually when the couples find out where they're going on their honeymoon and stuff like that like last year Everybody was like, we going to Panama, Panama. This year, everybody was like, oh, we going to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. It's going to be nice. It's Mexico. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, are we happy or not? Like, did y'all not want to go to Mexico? Is that, like, too common for y'all? Y'all wanted to go somewhere else? I don't know. But they didn't want to go. Well, I'm not going to say they didn't want to go. They just didn't seem as excited as, you know, previous seasons have when they find out where they're going on vacation. Well, honeymoon, I should say. So they all, you know, meet up at the airport. And I think it's the first time I've seen them all meet up at the airport. I think last year we saw them all meet back at the airport and when they got off the planes and stuff. But they all meet at the airport and they look like a nice, happy bunch, okay? Everybody's just happy to see everyone. And Woody even says, like, um, Bennett and Amelia look like the perfect couple like they look like they definitely gonna work like they meant for each other and i'm like they just give you that red sunshine where it's like we already know that you guys are perfect or whatever okay so now we get back to the rooms and the rooms are beautiful okay the bed is literally connected to the bed like they just step out and they here and they there they have these nice little like um pools outside their rooms and it's beautiful okay so henry and olivia are taking shots and i'm like oh my god hopefully these shots loosen henry up i mean like for real because like he is kind of like boring okay 
I said this, I've been saying this, he doesn't excite me. Watching him is not exciting, it's boring. So I could imagine what Christine is feeling like in that room. Just my opinion, just my thought. That's all I'm saying. So Cameron is basically saying she's kind of worried about, you know, Mal seeming too good to be true. And I can understand that and I can definitely see it because like you, she's, she's had guys pretend to be something they weren't okay um i think she's the one who had the boyfriend who had a baby on her i believe so i think that she's you know very like you know trying to just like you know make sure he is who he says he is okay he's saying that he loves the fact that she eats okay because apparently she ate a lot of food i mean a lot of food she just kept going on and on about all the foods that she loved and he was like i, I love you know i would love feeding you <laughs> and i'm just like all oh, I like them together. They're really wearing on me, you guys. Um, Cameron's really starting to wear on me a little bit. I'm starting to understand where she's coming from. I'm starting to see a side of her that I'm really enjoying, okay? Even though she's still a little standoffish and a little taken back, she does seem like she really is willing to open up to love, okay? Now, Woody and Amani are just comfortable together. They're getting out and they're sitting on the patio together and they're literally like, you know, talking and they're talking about like, you know, sex and things like that. And she's like, I'm not ready to have sex yet, but that doesn't mean we can't be intimate. And I think a lot of men need to understand that intimacy doesn't always mean sex. Intimacy can lead to sex though. So, you know, them taking a bath together is intimate, but it also can lead to them having, you know, sex because you start to share a bond with that person you start to connect with that person and you want to be closer to that person so i think that as long as woody is intimate and shows affection towards amani they will have no problem when it comes to actually you know having you know a good time basically um, benny and amelia basically bond over the word um pentacle i think that's the word y'all <laughs> Pentacle, okay. They are binding because she used the word pentacle and he wanted to figure he was trying to find that word yesterday when he wanted to explain what this process process was. And they both bonded over the fact that this is a pentacle, a pinnacle experience. Y'all, I'm gonna have to look it up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up, but it's a, it is it is what it is. Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. But you guys, yeah, that was pretty much the uh, episode. I enjoyed it. It did a lot for me. Like, um, I really got a little bit deeper into the couples. I realized that Christine is really not as bad as she may come off so far. Um, Karen is really starting to warm up my heart because I'm really starting to understand her. And I really enjoyed doing this review with you guys. Um, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Until next time, peace.